All right, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Fernando Yamamoto. He is um, with uh, Mississippi State University and leads the Catfish Nutrition Lab. We're looking forward to hearing a bit of an overview of your program. All right, thank you, Nick. Thank you for the introduction and take, thank you AFS, FHS for organizing and letting us present uh, our research here in the Mississippi State in Stoneville. So as the name suggests, we mainly attend and mainly conduct research with catfish and providing you guys a, a little background. And, and I know that you guys are familiar with this uh, information, but catfish is the main aquaculture sector in, here in the US and representing over 55% of the farm fish every year. And all this uh, production is concentrated in the Southeast uh, states, mainly being Mississippi, Alabama, and Arkansas, the, the main produ catfish producers here in the country. So we are developing, we, the goal of our laboratory is to develop technology and uh, transfer this technology to our stakeholders so they can have a more profitable and, and sustainable production of catfish. And providing you guys with, with a little bit of history uh, regarding the catfish industry, we've been in a uh, steady decline of uh, acreage usage. Like this surface water that has been used in the past 20 years uh, is basically one fourth of what it used to be. However, uh, production, uh, when it comes to the production has been in, being intensified. We are almost producing twice as much of what is was produced like 15 years ago. And the reasons of this uh, increased efficiency when raising our catfish is the technology generated that we can uh, transfer to our stakeholders, right? Like the, like the split ponds, the intensively aerated ponds, the hybrid catfish, the automated oxygen monitoring systems, and the vaccines. So we are being more effective when it comes to uh, productions, uh, uh, within the, uh, the the water surface area and but however we still use least cost formulations to develop our feeds trying to pay the minimum that we can with the feed to maximize our profit profit and this is a concept that was originally developed for other livestock like swine and poultry that they have a better control environment which can greatly help them to containing diseases, right? And this does not necessarily translate to aquaculture in general. When fish, they are constantly battling against fungi, viruses, parasites, and uh, bacteria. And, and not, not only that, the fish also have like a, a more primitive immune system when compared to these other livestock animals. In addition to that, uh, fish are subjected to stressors like fluctuation in the temperatures or handling or and transportation. And all these can make the fish more susceptible or more prone to the diseases. So with that in mind, we are trying to change the mindset of uh, our nutrition program where we are testing feed additives, alternative ingredients, and establishing better nutrient requirements for our farm catfish. With all that in mind, you uh, enhance their, their disease resistance and uh, their ability to combat all these uh, foreign microorganisms or parasites that are uh, that can naturally occur, occur in, the, in the ponds. So this is the roster that I currently have in my lab. I was very uh, fortunate to inherit the research technician and research associates from my predecessor. Uh, these are my grad students, and I'm going to steal the, their thunder and talk about their research because they will follow my presentation. Uh, and these are the visiting scholars that I currently have in my lab. They are doing part of their doctorate degree, spending six months or one year in my, uh, in my laboratory. They are investigating an array of things, and among them, the alternative lipids for, for catfish diets, uh, byproducts from the black soldier fly industry. And organic minerals and with all that trying to raise uh, not only make our diets uh, economically affordable but also to en enhance uh, their uh, disease resistance right 
This is our uh, facility. It's, uh, to my understanding, is one of the biggest in the country. We have 257 experimental ponds ranging from a tenth acre to uh, five acres. Uh, it's a total of 120 hectares of uh, uh, water surface. We closely collaborate with uh, the, the USDA, uh, our USDA counterpart. We are sharing the same building and we uh, uh, develop research together. And in my lab, I have 750 square meters of uh, area, three analytical labs and two wet labs with research systems. So we conduct our small trials in uh, in controlled environment in, in research systems. And then when we translate to uh, practical conditions, we move the experiments to the, uh, to the ponds. And one example that I can give you and this is the latest uh, publication of our lab is investigating an alternative ingredient, uh, mainly uh, originated from the biofuel industry. So we, in this past two, three years, we've been seeing a lot of fluctuation in the price of the commodities like soybean meal. So we were trying to look at what can we possibly use that's affordable and can be like an in-house solution so the United States is one of the biggest uh, ethanol industries, uh, is the biggest ethanol industry in the world, and using mainly uh, corn as their substrate to produce ethanol. So all the carbohydrates and lipids are used for the biofuel industry. And what we have left is a, 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 a very protein rich product, okay? And we not only want to see how the fish can grow or how digestible the ingredient is, we want to explore also like if this uh, type of ingredient can have like a nutraceutical properties being fermented along with yeast, they can modulate the immune system. So we can look on how uh, replacing the, the, the established ingredients like soybean meal in the diet in uh, incremental doses can affect the intestinal markers like for pro-inflammatory cytokine or uh, immune-related parameters in the intestine. We are also interested in looking at how these additives or how these ingredients can affect the intestinal microbiome and perhaps uh, hoping that, that that will not disrupt the, the, the normal microbiome of the fish, but all these uh, bacteria that can potentially be pathogens and uh, uh, looking for opportunistic, uh, look, looking for a, an opportunity to infect the fish, perhaps we can reduce the amount of these bacteria in the intestine with changing the diet or by add, supplementing the feed with additives. And with help with, of Dr. Griffin and Dr. Wise here at NWAP, we've been conducting uh, disease challenges after we conduct our treating trials. And for this product in particular, it was quite interesting to see almost like a dose response like uh, survival when we gradually increase the amount of corn fermented protein replacing uh, with soybean meal. So we want to make sure that if we are going to introduce this uh, product or ingredient to the industry, you're not going to make our fish more susceptible uh, to diseases. With that, this is like a brief over overview of my program and thank you all very much for uh, attending uh, uh, today's talk and I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Fernando. Folks, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or uh, unmute yourself. And maybe Fernando, if you could put your email in the chat too, folks may want to follow up with you after. Mm -hmm. today. Absolutely. Well, um, how do I do this?